How's it going YouTube? Welcome back to another video on the channel and today we have a very special video ranking the top 10 cards from Darkwing Blast, the new set coming out in just about 10 days time. Before we begin, two important things. One, I've become a YouTube partner finally and this is obviously a lot thanks to you guys watching this so thank you so so much and especially for this week I'm having a seven day giveaway over on Twitter giving away a prismatic secret rare from the 2022 tins every single day we've started with the blue eyes white dragon as a, a starter as an amazing giveaway to you guys we also have crossout and herald and we have four more days of giveaway you can still participate head over to my twitter follow like and retweet and you can join the giveaway as well so again thank you so much head on over there to see how you can participate in the amazing giveaways and now we have the top 10 cards from Darkwing Blast. Before we begin, make sure to hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel if you're new as always, and we finally have a full spoiler card list and rarity list for the new TCG course at Darkwing Blast, and I'm here to give you like a spoiler on the top 10 cards you might want to consider picking up if you are interested in those archetypes and overall just ranking the top 10 best cards of the set because this set like Power of the Elements is actually amazing and a game changer for Yu-Gi-Oh! So the first card are actually two cards we have are Tier Limits Grief and Tier Limits Scream. Both of these are new spells for the Tier Limits archetype. So the first one, Grief, is a normal spell card that lets you special summon a Tier Limits or a Visa Starfrost from your deck, then send a monster you control with the same type and attribute as the one you special summon to the graveyard. And if this card is sent to the graveyard by a card effect, you can target one of your banished Tier Limit traps and add it to your hand. So, um... This is the normal spell, and the continuous spell is Tier Limits Scream. If a monster is normal or special summoned while you control a Tier Limits or a Visa Starfrost monster, you can send the top three cards from your deck to the graveyard, and all face of monsters your opponent control lose 500 attack. And if this card goes to the graveyard by a card effect, you can add a Tier Limits trap to your hand. Why are these so good? And I think that these are going to see some play. Grief is basically just foolish burial right because you can special summon a tier limits monster then if i'm correct and if i'm reading this right you can send that monster to the graveyard immediately by this card effect and of course tier limits scream just lets you mill an extra three cards every turn and increasing your chance to hit something and special summon either on your turn or your opponent's turn i think that these two are going to see play i think scream specifically might be a one of staple in tier limits because of the mill power and these are just like great additions to the archetype. We're getting a lot of add-ons to tier limits. And the next card, card number two, is tier limits rule Kalos. This is the new fusion monster for tier limits. It requires one kit Kalos as fusion material plus one tier limits monster. Other aqua monsters you control cannot be destroyed by battle. This is the big one. When your opponent activates a card or effect that includes special summoning a monster, um, Nibiru, you can negate the activation if you do destroy that card. Then you can also send one tier limits card from your hand or face up on, from the field to the graveyard. And, of course, if this fusion summon card is sent to the graveyard, you can special summon it back. So, I think this is the big piece that tier limits needed. Not that they actually needed anything, because the deck is so powerful already. This finally gets tier limits the negate that they need. I think that the big missing piece from Branded at the time when it was a good deck, that it didn't really have a negate, a, mo a proper monster negate, not Dragos Topelia, but a proper negate in the archetype and now i think tier limits get exactly what they need these two spell cards in addition to rule kalos are going to increase the ceiling for tier limits overall the next card is again two cards and these are the bestial magnemut and the bestial joy's worm and bestials again with tier limits are going to really control what we see in the next format the bestial cards are dark dragons that kind of work in tandem with the branded archetype but also perform really well as standalone hand trap these are just like dd crows on steroids so all the bestial monsters have the same effect where you can banish one light or dark monster from either graveyard to special summon them and it's a quick effect if your opponent controls monsters so essentially Whenever your opponent has a monster, if they activate a tier limits in the graveyard, you can just banish it, summon this, and the Magnemut uh, searches for another dragon monster, any dragon monster during the end phase, 
and the Druid Swarm. When it's sent from the field to the graveyard, you can send one monster your opponent controls to the graveyard. So again, really, really strong stuff and very generic, can be played basically in any strategy. Lights and darks are still probably the most popular archetypes as of today. And these are for sure 100% going to see a lot of play and just become staples in a lot of decks. And another staple that is really, really powerful is the Kashtira Fenrir. This is a really big surprise being an ultra rare in Darkwing Blast, which makes it a lot more affordable because this might be a three of in a lot of decks as a staple. We're getting into a zone where a lot of these cards are just going to be like a throw in staples in a lot of decks. So what Fenrir does, it does tie into the Kostra archetype. But again, in the OCG, they play three of these cards just as a standalone interruption. What this does is, uh, of course, it's a level seven monster and it has 2400 attack, which is a big boy. If you control no monsters, you can just special summon this card from your hand. And during the main phase, you can add another Kostra monster from your deck to your hand not excluding the Fenrir. You can just add another one for your next turn. When this card declares an attack or if your opponent activates a monster effect, you can target on face-up card, your opponent controls a card, banish it face down. So as just a generic thing, this is so generic and so powerful on its own that there's no reason why not to throw this in in any deck, just like the Bestial monster. It's still gonna be expensive because this card is going to see play 100%, um, but Fenrir is, again, another just really, really strong monster you can special summon for free, banish cards face down, pretty insane. The next couple of cards we have are personal favorites of mine, but if you are interested in playing Bestials and Branded in the next format, you might want to pick these up as well. We have the Branded Beast, which is a continuous trap card, and we have Branded Regained, which is a continuous spell card. So the good thing about these is that you can set up your Bestial combo during your turn. And then by the end phase, because of all the Bestial monster effects, you can have the Branded Beast and the Branded Regained already face up on the field by the effects of Bestial Rebellion. So what Branded Beast does is during the main phase, if you control a Bestial monster, you can tribute one Dragon Monster, target one card your opponent controls and destroy it. And during the end phase, it also recycles one continuous uh, spell or trap branded spells trap specifically and places it face up on the field so this is basically just a generic pop it also sends your bestial monsters to the graveyard triggering their effects and then you have branded regain if a light or dark monster is banished and again works so so well with the bestial monster you can target one of those monsters place it on the bottom of the deck and then draw one card you can use it once per turn and again another soft once per turn is if your opponent special summons or normal summons a monster you can target one bestial monster in your graveyard and special summon it this is really crazy again a really good upgrade for branded and of course amazing support for the bestial monsters as well and branded are going to be really really good in the next format and they're also going to have the bestial monsters that sort of interact as a counter to them as well so as a branded player right now currently i'm really interested to see what happens with this but again these couple are both super rares going to be super affordable and you only need one in each deck so definitely consider picking these up if you want to play branded the next card we have is kind of a sleeper i think this is a super if i'm not mistaken and it's called simul archfiends what this card does it's a normal trap card that says that neither player can special summon monsters of the same type they already control ritual fusion synchro xyz or link for the rest of the turn and also if you do not control more than one monster of the same type so if you control only one monster of the same type of ritual fusion synchro xyz or link all ritual fusion synchro xyz or link monsters you currently control gain 500 attack points so this and another card that we'll see in a second which is a tcg exclusive this one is just like an upgraded weird sort of dimensional barriers if you think of decks that sort of have this specific line or specific color in the extra deck if you're thinking about sword souls with synchros if you're thinking about branded or tiered that have a lot of fusion monsters you have a lot of xyz decks and of course link decks that are not covered by dimensional barrier if your opponent for example tri brigade even if your opponent already controls a link monster you activate this they cannot summon link monsters for the rest of the turn as long as they have that one monster in the field so i think this is a really interesting side deck card for going first if you're playing against a specific strategy 
and I'm definitely going to be picking up three copies of these to have in my side deck just in case. The next one we have is Sprite Sprint. So this is another sprite support. This is a link to that can be summoned off of two monsters, including a link rank or level two monster. Cannot be used as link material to turn it summoned, just like Sprite Elf. And if this card is link summoned, you can send one level two monster from your deck to the graveyard. If another monster is special summoned while this card is on the field, you can detach one material from a monster you control, then target one monster on the field and return it to the hand. So, this is basically just a foolish burial to any level two monster from your deck. This, I mean, it, it doesn't need a lot of explaining to understand why this card is so good. And even though Ronin was taken away from Sprite, this card gives additional juice to the frogs that already are in play. And this kind of increases the ability to go into Toad again. And also having this effect to bounce a monster to the hand is just more synergetic with Sprite Elf and might be the other Link 2 monsters that Sprite players will now go for instead of IP Mascarena. The next card we have is the World Ocean Dragon Zelantis and it's a Link 4 monster that can be summoned with one or more effect monster. So first time that you can actually have a Link 4 monster, just Link Summon using another Link 4 monster. So this is really cool. It's got 2500 attack, it's a water sea serpent. And what it says that during the main phase, you can banish as many monsters on the field as possible. Then special summon as many monsters banished by this card's effect back to their owner's fields in face-up attack position, face-up defense position, or face-down defense position. So any position you want, basically. And during the battle phase, you can destroy cards in the field up to the number of co-linked monsters on the field. So because this card has really good link arrows, you can actually, first of all, clear a lot of cards from your opponent's board. Then you can banish them and not send them to the graveyard, so not a lot of monsters get triggered by this kind of effect. Then, of course, you can return some of these monsters. If you are playing a Link strategy, you can turn return some of them in face-down defense position or in face-up defense position, and your Link monsters must be summoned back in face-up attack position, so this already gives you an edge. And, of course, because it has such good arrows, it has uh, one up, one down, one left, and one right, you can special summon the monsters back into the arrows and also special summon your opponent's monsters into its own arrow that is pointing into your opponent's field. So I think this one might not be super expensive and it might not see a lot of play to begin with, but I think this is one of those Link 4s that you should have in your arsenal, similar to Appaloosa and Axis Code, that have not always been amazing, not every format, but once in a while. And trust me, somebody will find a way to break this. It will come in handy. So this is another big one. And I think this isn't going to be super expensive. So consider picking this up as well. And now we have the final two cards. And they are both TCG exclusive. And I think Konami, you did an excellent job with these two. And first of all, we have the trap card. We have Destructive Dharma Karma Cannon. And this is a normal trap card that says change as many monsters in the field as possible to face down defense position then if either player controls a face up monster they must send all face up monsters they control to the graveyard so i think this is a very very interesting and innovative card from konami this also really really favors a deck in which you don't play links or if you activate it during your opponent's turn when you don't have link monsters so basically what you can do with this is wait for your opponent to combo off and as long as they have a link monster on the field that cannot be flipped face down, you essentially Book of Moon all over their field, except for the link monsters. And then if you only flipped one and they still have the link monsters face up on the field, they must send all the face up monsters they control to the graveyard. So what does this mean? This means, first of all, that the opponent must send the cards and not you and not this card's effect. So this essentially means it outs things like the arrival at Agnister that are unaffected by card effect because your opponent must take the action to do this, similar to evenly matched. And in the case of towers like cards like arrival at Agnister, they will be the ones remaining face up on the field by this effect. So I think this is super, super interesting, again, as a side deck tech option, and I'm really curious to see what this card's developed to be. And the last card we have is another TCG exclusive, and it's called Spellbound. We didn't really see this coming. Uh, we only saw it during the reveals in the premiere, and Spellbound is 
pretty interesting. The more we thought of it, it sort of became less powerful in our minds, but still this really, really cool innovative card just ups the power level of the set to new heights. And this is a quick play spell card and it says all monsters your opponent controls currently cannot be tributed or used as material for fusion, synchro Xyz, or link summon until the end of the turn. So this is again another version of this dimensional barrier upgrade that we saw earlier. This is a quick play spell card so it can also be activated during your turn if your opponent starts comboing off. But the main thing is one it's basically sort of a dimensional barrier for links as well. And also the fact that the monsters cannot be tributed makes this really, really good in countering Flounderies. This is of course also good in a lot of other strategies against a lot of other decks. For example, against Sword Soul, against cards like Tier Limits as well, if they start uh, going off and having a lot of danger monsters on the field, you can of course activate it and they sort of have to just like get stuck with a lot of monsters on the field because they cannot link them off. So this is I think a really really spicy new TCG exclusive in the set and this is definitely a card that you should consider picking up. So yeah, this has been a long top 10 and a lot of duplicates here, but I think these cards are really really interesting and going through these cards and just reading them out loud makes me sort of understand how strong Darkwing Blast is going to be. So we had Power of the Elements, which totally changed the TCG, and I think Darkwing Blast is going to be very, very similar. So let me know what you thought in the comments down below. Make sure to hit a thumbs up button and subscribe if you are new. And of course, don't forget to head over to Twitter and join the giveaway. We're giving away seven cards from the tins, high-end Prismatic Secret Rares. So you really, really want to participate, head on over to my Twitter. It's in the description box below to participate in the giveaway. Thank you so much as always, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.